garden in the morning light. It is such a magical time and I think that it looks prettier this time of day than any other. I wanted to give you an update on where we were at with the garden on this side. Um, this side yard is on the south facing side of the house. It's probably only maybe eight or nine feet across and um, the only thing that the side yard was used for initially was uh, for laundry. So the shed that you see behind me with the orange door is where our washer and dryer are and that's not unusual in older parts of Tucson to see the washer and dryer kept outside the house and that's just because the houses on this in this neighborhood are much smaller and so um, there's not a lot of room for a washer and dryer inside the house so um, sometimes you see it on the back porch sometimes you see it in the garage and sometimes you see it in a shed on its own just like ours are so we have a clothesline and we've got the shed behind me and that's where our washer and dryer are kept and so the only time at first that I ever came to the side of the yard was just to do laundry or to hang it up to dry um, so um, I decided that I wanted to put a garden in over here now there was one stock tank already here and so we added six to um, my right side and um, of course as gardeners know you always need just a little more space to be able to try something else and so last weekend we added another five on this side so I have quite a bit of growing space now I think and um, it's perfect over here it gets nice and hot so the chilies love it and the squash and the tomatoes um, it's on the south side and so it gets lots of southern exposure and um, it's also just kind of tucked out of the way so that it doesn't get in the way of the rest of the yard which is pretty small on its own so all in all, I think that it's really perfect. Um, we have a chain link fence that runs along the left side and um, that works out really well for beans to climb on and for me to kind of use it as an anchor point to, to, to tie up a tomato and um, things like that. I just wanted to give you an update on how it was going. I gave you an update earlier on uh, building the initial six tubs and so I wanted to show you the extra tubs that we put in last weekend. Now I still do have some pots on this side. I have some old black plastic landscaping uh, pots that I literally dug out of the trash can probably three or four years ago and they're really thick and super heavy duty so I use those um, and I've grown okra in those and tomatoes and uh, zucchini and lots of other things and so um, they seem to work really well and I just wash them out and clean them really well every year and just keep using them. So I still have quite a few of those on this side too so technically I could probably get one extra stock tank in here if I wanted to move those out of the way but for right now free is good and so I'm just going to keep using those. And I also have some terracotta pots and um, a couple of felt bags that I'm using too. So I do have a little extra overflow space. And let's be honest, there's always too many seedlings in my greenhouse. I can't control myself. <laughs> I should not be trusted with a packet of seeds because I always sow way too many. I want to just take you on a tour and show you what we've got so far. I also want to give you an update about the um, backyard where the chickens are. We got one extra um, five foot oval shaped stock tank for that area as well as another um, another large circular stock tank. So um, we have a little extra space back there for planting too in addition to the two um, kind of shabby wooden planting beds that were here when we moved in. They just needed a little bit of reinforcement and some new soil and they're gonna work just fine I think for a couple more years. We're in the backyard now, the backyard. It's uh, just a really small space where I have the chickens and um, you guys should remember that from our previous video. And this was a space originally that had been pretty overgrown with brush and um, overgrown trees and 
just a bunch of crap back here. So it looked really bad, it was pretty unusable. We just cleaned it all up and made a garden space out of a spot that was really unusable and kind of gross. And uh, I think it's starting to look really pretty now. I wanna give you an update on what we did over the weekend. We bought two extra stock tanks, like I mentioned before, a circular one and a five foot oval one. And we put those back here along with the two um, repurposed beds that were here when we moved into the house. So um, I think really we've got a lot of great garden space back here now. And we also added in some felt bags so that we could put a few more things in here and there. And so let me show you what it looks like. This is the circular bed. I can't remember the dimensions on it right now, so um, I'll try to put it in the description box below if, if I can find them. Um, but uh, right now I've just got some Swiss chard around the edges. So um, I've got Swiss chard around the edges and I also have some Coreopsis that I planted that should only get like maybe 10 or 12 inches tall, so I think that it'll be okay too. I'm trying to do a much better job this year of putting flowers around the garden to draw in the pollinators. I have been a pretty hardcore vegetable gardener in the past and neglected terribly putting in um, plants and flowers for the pollinators. So this year I'm turning over a new leaf and doing a much better job at that. I have a teepee that I put in. So this is an experiment. I decided that I was going to try to grow some um, scarlet runner beans on the trellis for the hummingbirds and the bees and stuff like that. Plus it just looks really pretty with the red blooms. And I thought that I could just grow it vertically and then maybe if I left the trellis open to the south side that um, it would still get enough sun exposure to be able to grow a couple of zucchini in the bottom. Now, that might be a fail, I have no idea, but I'll let you know how it works out. I just thought that it would look kind of cool and that I could use the space really well. We also put in these felt bags. I decided since it's kind of a barrio garden in the southwest in Tucson that it needed a little bit of color, so I chose the multicolor pack from Bootstrap Farmer for their felt bags. And I think they look really cute. Um, there's purple, red, orange, brown, um, and I'm just gonna alternate those around the outside of the circle tub. My initial thought was that I would just surround the whole thing because you always need more garden space, right? And um, But I decided that if I put tomatoes or anything very bushy in there that it might shade out the, the plants that are in the tub because tomatoes can get to be three or four feet tall so I didn't want them shading out what was actually in the tub behind the bag. So the other thing the other thing is that I don't want to create uh, an area where there's not very much airflow because that could uh, promote some disease. I wouldn't have any space to get to the stock tank to harvest what was in the stock tank if I had a four foot tomato plant in every bag surrounding the stock tank. So I think what I'm going to do is take every other one out and just put them somewhere else in the yard or maybe save them for next year. And um, that way I'll have a lot more space, there'll be more airflow, and I think it'll just look better overall. The other thing that we did um, is we put in uh, like a five foot um, oval shaped stock tank um, that I'll show you here in just a second. And we added a trellis in the back so that I could grow some melons or beans or cucumbers um, up the back part vertically and really utilize the space. Um, I have tomatoes in there right now, but I think that if I plant the beans while the tomatoes are small, um, they'll grow up no problem and they'll get plenty of sun. It's a pretty big stock tank, so I think that I'm not going to have a problem getting tomatoes in here. I think I could actually add a few more if I wanted to, but as you can see, there is a trellis up behind it. There's a trellis up behind it so that the beans or cucumbers or melons or whatever I choose to grow can climb up the back. And I'm going to plant those pretty quickly because I want them to have a chance to establish before the tomatoes get too big and bushy and um, maybe shade out the seedlings. So right now the tomatoes are planted super deep up to their neck and they're pretty small right now. So this is a perfect time. Now I just need to decide am I going to plant beans or melons or cucumbers? I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys could give me your opinion. Um, but that's what I have so far and I'm still trying to think about what I want to add in front of the tomatoes. We also put in more bags in front of the stock tank because I need more garden space. And um, so I think I might do every other on those two just to give space, airflow, and things like that. And I think for these bags, I don't know if you can see behind me. 
yeah. You can see those bags behind me. Those are much larger than the ones that are around the circular tank. But I think for those bags, um, since they're gonna be so close to the stock tank behind them and they're much taller, that I'm gonna keep things in them to a smaller size. So maybe like eggplants or bush cucumbers or a zucchini or something like that, but nothing too vertical, you know, so that it blocks the light from the tomatoes behind them. The chicken coop then is right behind me, right next to that stock tank I just showed you. And I'm kind of excited about a silly little project that I did. You know how you get a wild hair when you're out in the garden and you're just fooling around? Well, I got a wild hair the other day and I decided that the chickens needed their own flower garden because, hello, I mean, these girls are really appreciative of flowers, I think. So, right there, I added a little flower garden in. I added a trench about 18 inches deep, dug out the old gross soil, and I added in compost. And I planted some safflower that I had um, started in the greenhouse. I added some nasturtium, some calendula, and some hollyhock, because I just kind of wanted some um, pollinator-friendly um, plants that are super easy, that kind of grow in poor soil, and I think that those will do really well. Those flowers, this, this, cut the chickens. The safflowers will get to be about four feet tall, and I think the hollyhocks uh, will be four or five feet tall too. My thought was that it would provide them with some shade and also maybe some relief from the heat since the plants are going to be putting off a little bit of moisture and make it feel a little cooler back here too. Plus, it'll attract my pollinators, so I feel like it's a win-win all, all in one. I didn't have any edging or border, so I just decided that I was going to use some of our firewood that we had in the pile right next to the chicken coop. So I just used some round logs that I thought were the right size and shape and kind of made a very rustic um, border for their flower garden. The chickens have their own flower garden and there's no shame in that. I feel like they really appreciate the flowers. I feel like they're looking forward to the blooms and having the bees nearby. I mean, these chickens are cultured chickens. They're not your average chickens. 